Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. You've just produced your first litter of boas and you're really excited. You have them up for sale, but they're not selling. So why is this the case? Well, today we're going to explore some of the possible reasons why your boas aren't selling. I'm also going to say quite a bit about the boa market in general and different marketing strategies. So even if you're just looking to buy, not sell, or if you're just interested in how the boa and reptile market work, I think there'll be something for you in today's video. So be sure to stay tuned. Start with, I thought I'd grab a boa and one of my favorites and definitely a favorite of the viewers of the Brian Boas YouTube channel. This is of course, Mr. Pink, a beautiful Suriname boa, 2019 male from uh, Two to Hope and Florida Red Tails Bloodlines bred by Brian Abramson. Just a great looking animal. Animals like this basically sell themselves. So if you're producing animals that look like this, you probably don't need this video because people are going to be lining up to buy your boas. But for the rest of us, that's why I have this video that I'm putting together. So if your boas aren't selling, it's probably a combination of the following reasons. And I think these are the most likely reasons why. So you really want to examine what you're doing, your strategy, really try to examine it objectively. We all get emotionally involved with our boas and sometimes we're a little bit oblivious to what's really going on. But if you're as objective as possible, hopefully you can figure things out and turn things around. So the first reason why people might not be buying your boas is because they don't know who you are. You don't have a reputation. And this is for everybody when they're starting out, people don't know who they are. I was in the same ballpark, you know, at one point. You just need to build up your reputation. Let people know what you're doing so that when you have the boas ready to go, they know who to contact. And as I said before, I think it's really important for you to be marketing what you're doing before you even have baby boas on the ground. And we have social media these days, which makes it super easy to let people know what you're doing and get the message out there. You can have YouTube videos, Facebook, Instagram, lots of even other types of social media, but it's a great way of easily getting the message out there about what you're doing. You can also connect with other boa keepers and people interested in boas in the different groups. So I don't think anybody these days does not take advantage of social media. And it's really a great thing as far as marketing boas and pretty much anything else. The next is kind of related to this and it's that you have a not so good reputation. Maybe you did things a little bit wrong in the past or maybe somebody had a bad experience and they went and they told a bunch of people. Unfortunately, this happens and sometimes it's a he said, she said situation. Sometimes sellers are unfairly treated by uh, buyers whose expectations are just not realistic. So if this does happen, you want to try to respond and try to you know, put out the fire as much as you can. Unfortunately, when marketing anything, for every one negative comment or negative reputation out there, that kind of undoes all of the good that you have by like 100 positive transactions. So if you have 100 really smooth positive transactions and one negative transaction, that could basically wipe away all of the gain from those positive transactions. So you just wanna make sure not to have these negative transactions happen. And if they do, you know, try to deal with the situation as best you can. Um, some people, unfortunately, there's a few bad apples among boa sellers as there is in pretty much any other endeavor. There are some people you really don't wanna deal with and they have a bad reputation that's well-deserved. And I'm not gonna get into that. If you're in that category, you shouldn't be selling boas anyway. So this video isn't really gonna help you. So when you think about it, you want your seller to trust you, to know what they're getting into. Uh, many of these sellers, you're never, gonna, you're never gonna meet them. You may not even talk to them over the phone. Okay, so how is somebody who doesn't even know you is gonna trust you by sending lots of their hard earned cash to you in exchange for a BOA. You wanna make sure that they feel 100% comfortable with the whole transaction. So do whatever you have to, to assure them that they're getting a great BOA and that it's gonna be a smooth, easy transaction and they're not gonna get ripped off. And unfortunately, there's quite a few stories out there about people who've been ripped off by unscrupulous BOA sellers. You wanna do everything you can to let the buyer know that you're not one of those people. 
The next reason why people might not be buying your boas is that you're trying to sell them to the wrong markets. And so there's a number of different ways you can sell boas. And actually I did a video about uh, a week and a half ago about where to sell your boas. So check that one out if you didn't see that. This is actually kind of a follow-up video to that. But that will give you a good idea about the different places that you can go to sell your boas. But I would recommend that you try to uh, sell in multiple different markets to increase your odds of success. And you might just be marketing to the wrong crowd, so to speak. For example, if you're producing really high-end morph boas that are costing in the thousands of dollars and you're trying to market them to a local pet shop, chances are they're not going to be interested because local pet shops are going to be looking more for the low-end, you know, the less expensive types of boas that more pet owners will want. Things like just normal common boas and some of the less expensive morphs like albinos and hypos and maybe a jungle. They're not going to be interested in, let's say, a uh, leucocystic boa, you know, super, di super, uh, what is it? Super fire princess diamond boa that costs like three grand because that's just out of the uh, budget of most pet owners. Okay. Or maybe you are producing really nice locality specific boas and you're trying to market them at your local club, but just your local reptile club, but just by chance, nobody there is uh, interested in locality boas, they're all into the morph boas. So you might not have any luck because they can see, um, you know, what you think is a great, really cool locality specific boa, they just see it as a normal, not a morph boa. So they're not going to be interested in it. So it's really important to go to the right market and have the right animal for that particular market if you want to be successful. The reasons we've discussed so far about why your boas might not be selling have to do with you. Yes, you are the problem. But now we're going to go to something that isn't necessarily you, but it's the boas or the reptiles that you're selling. And that is that you're selling or trying to sell boas that just aren't in demand. People just don't want them. And so why might a boa or other reptile not be in demand? Well, it could just be not a popular pet species, something that people just don't keep, something that people aren't interested in, maybe some kind of obscure Central American colibri. Or maybe it's a species that just has a really bad reputation in the pet trade. There's just no reason for anybody to keep it, so it's just not very popular. And so regardless, if you're producing boas that people aren't going to be interested in, then you know there's really no way you're going to sell them. So people often will advise reptile keepers to work with something you're really passionate about. You know, that's what's most important. And while I would agree with that, it's also important to consider whether there's a demand for the babies if you're going to breed it. There's absolutely no point whatsoever to breed reptiles if there's not a demand for them because we have enough homeless and unwanted animals of all species reptile and non-reptile to begin with. So we, the last thing we need is more unwanted reptiles out there. So really think carefully about before you breed something, should you be breeding this animal? Will you be able to find homes for the babies? Are the babies in demand? And if the answer is no, I would say do not breed that reptile. Breed something else or don't breed anything at all. Um, you know, any reptile, any animal of any kind that you produce, you're ultimately responsible for the care of the offspring and you need to provide the care for as long as it takes to find the new home. So please, please, please don't be breeding something that people don't want. So with boas, I would say that as far as many of the more common morphs and just more common, just normal boas that just aren't really anything special, there is a pretty large glut of these available. In fact, many Humane societies have unwanted boas, uh, you know, you're just your common normal pet store boa that need homes. So I would say absolutely really th think twice about if you're just going to breed like a normal common boa just for the sake of breeding it because we don't need any more boas. And I'd say if you want to get one of these boas as a pet and they make fantastic pets by the way, you might want to think about going to a humane society and giving a home to an unwanted animal. It's just a win-win situation. Uh, another example of something that doesn't make sense to breed is crossbreeding different localities. And I get these questions all the time. Can I breed a Tarahumara and a Suriname? Or a Paraguana and a Qualqui? 
And I say, well, it might be biologically possible, but it's just an awful idea because locality collectors want pure localities and crossing different localities is against anything they stand for. And there's going to be no market in these animals. They're just going to not going to have any desirability. Uh, so I would say absolutely don't do that. It's a really, really bad idea. So really think twice about what you're going to breed. And if you come to the conclusion that the reason your boas aren't selling is because they're just not desirable, please don't breed these animals again. Because as I said, there's enough unwanted animals on the market and, you know, in society as a whole as it is. Okay, but uh, before I forget, I thought I'd take out another animal that probably sells itself. This is a Pacalpa Peruvian boa born here in 2020. Nice holdback male. And uh, fortunately, Peruvian boas have a huge demand. They're just very hard to get. I found them harder to breed than the Surinams. Beautiful, beautiful looking animal. One of the you know, top choices, top picks for the locality enthusiasts. And many people consider these to be the epitome of the boa constrictor experience due to their very muscular large bodies and their beautiful colors and long red tail. Okay, so the next type, the next reasons why your boa might not be selling have to do with your ad. And I see this all the time. People are putting ads on the classifieds or even on Facebook or something like that. They're not giving enough information. And the first reason why they're not getting enough information are the pictures. I'm kind of amazed at how bad many of these pictures are in the boa classified ads. And you know, you don't have to be Ansel Adams or Edward Weston in order to take a really nice photo of a boa. All you have to do is understand the basic uh, camera the or basic photographic theory, what an f-stop is, what shutter speed is, what ISO are. You have to have a basic um, understanding of what makes a picture clear, what makes a picture in focus, things like that. And then a, a handle on photographic composition just to make the boa look good in the photo. And then please show the entire animal. I can't believe how many photos I see in these classifieds that just have like a close up of the animal's side or like underneath it or something. They're not even showing its whole body. I mean, who is going to be able to make a decision about whether they want to buy that boa based on that picture? I see pictures that are out of focus. Uh, I always see pictures where they're selling one animal, but you look in the photograph and there's like three different boas. It's like, well, which one is for sale? And then I love where they show you the one for sale and then they show you the holdback. And of course, the holdback litter mate is always like head and shoulders above the one they're selling. You know, so if you want to sell your boa, don't put it right next to its much more beautiful looking sibling because that's not going to make anybody want to buy it. So please just take a few hours and figure out how to take photos. It's not that hard. And photography is extremely enjoyable. You know, one of my uh, main interests in life, actually. I hear so many people saying, oh, I'm just not a good photographer. You know, I can't take a picture. And they just make up all these BS excuses that just aren't true. Okay, it's just not that hard to take a photo. You can even use your freaking phone to take a photo. And um, a phone isn't going to give you as good results as a dedicated camera, but you can get a decent photo. Um, so don't make the excuses, just take the time, learn how to use a camera and get nice photos of the boa so that people can really see it and evaluate it. You don't want just one photo, you want at least three photos, maybe one photo from the top, one from the side, and then one with maybe like a close up of any of its features that you want to accentuate. Maybe it's got a really beautiful head shape or its tail is really colorful, things like that. And of course you can put more than three photos if you want can't hurt to have more photos. And you can also put photos of the parents if you want. And that's always a good idea because many boas change over time like the longicata and the people might want to see what it's going to look like as an adult. But really put nice photos there. As they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. And I think it would be easier to sell kind of mediocre examples, decent mediocre examples of boas that are in demand with decent photos than if you had like a stellar top-notch boa with a crappy photo because the photo is really that important. And then a related thing why boas don't sell is because the description is incomplete. Okay, maybe you just have the photo and it says Suriname Redtail. No other information. 
something like that. You want to give as much information as you can. The birth date, the bloodline if you have it, the locality, what it's eating, the size of it. Maybe a little bit back, a background about your, the pedigree or you know the project you've been working on. Anything to give the BOA buyer the reason to buy the BOA. And people are often buying the experience. They're, they're interested in your project and what you're working on. And maybe they have a buddy on Facebook who has a, a BOA from the same litter. They want to connect with people who have the BOAs that are the siblings of their BOAs. Um, in fact, with these locality BOAs, sometimes you only have one or two litters in the entire world. So anybody who has them is kind of like part of a big family, a big BOA family. And people really think it's cool to have a BOA that their friend has its sibling or its cousin or uncle or something like that. People just love their BOAs and they want to connect with other people in the extended BOA family that are keeping their BOAs relatives. So you want to put all this information in the ad so someone has a reason why they want to add their your boa to their collection. Thought I'd grab another piece of boa eye candy for you to enjoy while I'm talking and thought I'd mix things up a bit and grab one of my morph boas. This guy is a moon glow. He's a uh, 2020 baby so he's going on three years old. Real cool looking animal. Even if you're not into the morphs, you know I understand that but you have to admit that this is just a cool example of the power of genetics. We have three genes, the hypo, the call albino, uh, and the anerythristic, and together they produce this beautiful, very pale yellow animal. Just really cool animal. And this guy I actually paired up this year. He was a little bit young, but I keep reading everywhere about how morph boa males can breed. Some people claim even when they're like a year old, uh, so I figured I'd give it a shot and unfortunately he doesn't seem to be interested in his older female who is a call junglo. So I don't think we're going to get any of his babies this year but uh, maybe next year we'll just have to see. He's usually really laid back but uh, maybe because he's breeding right now he's a little more hyped up but hopefully he'll cooperate for the video. Okay so this brings us to the last two reasons why your bow is might not be selling and the first is that pretty simple reason you don't ship them and I can understand why people are stressed out about shipping a boa they got to package it up they got to pay expensive amounts to ship and then it's really always a nail biter every time you ship a boa and I've shipped hundreds and hundreds of animals and every time I'm kind of biting my nails even though nothing's ever really gone bad I'm always checking the FedEx tracking and I'm always really relieved when the buyer has it and it's safe and you know the, the transaction has been completed. But shipping uh, extends your market exponentially. So if you're selling things locally, even if you're in a relatively populated area like you know New York City New York City area or the Bay San Francisco Bay Area, there's a limited number of people that are going to be shopping for your specific BOA. And if you ship, you can reach potentially globally. I know a lot of people, myself included, don't ship out of the US because of the uh, logistical complications. But even the US market is a pretty big market, much larger than your local market. Shipping is safe. Uh, you know, I've done it so many times, I, I said I get nervous, but I don't really think that much about it anymore, to be honest. It's just, it always seems to go fine. Anytime I've had a boa shipped to me, it's ended up fine. So it's not really something to be all that concerned about. It makes it, as I said, much easier to reach customers. And then the, down, the benefit, you don't have to like interact with customers. If you're, you know, antisocial, you know, as many of us boa keepers are, we just want to interact with our boas more than with other people. You don't need to see people face to face other than the people at FedEx, of course. So that's an advantage to why you might want to ship. Um, I see boas all the time on the classifieds like King Snake and Fauna, and sometimes it says will not ship. Often it's a really high-end item, and I can understand why they don't want to ship an expensive reptile. But unless you just happen to have somebody in your town who has, you know, eight grand to buy a pair of radiated tortoises, for example, you're not going to be able to sell them. So I would definitely consider shipping 
Uh, if you're concerned about doing it, I've made videos before on how to ship. So check one of those out. And uh, I'm sure you'll find that it's really not nearly as difficult as you might imagine. And so this takes us to the final reason why your boa or other reptile might not be selling. And that's the price. You've set an inappropriate price. So of course it's very important to set the price right, not too high, not too low. And so I would advise you to be researching the herp market all the time, looking at ads on Morph Market and Fauna and Classifieds, uh, or uh, kingsnake.com Classifieds. Also asking your friends what they paid for their boas, things like that. Going to the reptile shows to see the prices. And just because something is listed at a certain price doesn't mean it necessarily sold at that price. You might see a snake that's been for sale for months and the price is just too high or something like that. Likewise, you might see a litter of animals that gets put for sale and they're gone within like a day or two, which might tell you something about the price. You know, could the price have been a little bit higher? Would people have paid that? So the boa market is a free market. Okay, it's set by, prices are set by supply and demand. Okay, so it's up to the buyer to try to get the best possible deal. It's up to the sellers to try to get the most possible money to recoup their investment. And that, of course, is an oversimplification. You know, it's not just about money or about recouping your investment. It's about long-term, your projects and where they're going and how long you're gonna be able to sustain your boa breeding operation. Um, and you know, I've talked about this, these, some of these issues in previous videos, and I'll probably talk about it in the future videos as well. But I have a pretty good idea about the current market value of a specific boa and what you're going to ask for your particular animals. So people have a tendency to overvalue their own items. And this is not just for boas, this is for pretty much anything. If you own something, you're psychologically likely to place a much higher value on it than if it's owned by someone else. And when you're talking about boas that a lot of people just have this emotional attachment to, they're their babies, so to speak, they will possibly place a value too high. Okay, so if you've placed a value on your boa, you wanna really think, is that your value? Or is that the value that someone would be likely to pay for it based on what people are paying for similar animals in the current boho market? This guy is uh, not quite as laid back today as I was hoping. So if you're, nothing is selling and it seems like maybe your prices are a little bit too high, you probably wanna drop the prices. But I would say really think about it ahead of time because if you keep changing your prices, going up, going down, things like that, it really looks flaky. And people are going to think, well, this person doesn't know what they're doing. You know, maybe I'll wait till next week and they'll go on sale for half price, something like that. And by the way, I usually, I think sales are probably not that good of an idea. And, you know, maybe you want to give a discount to uh, repeat customers or something like that. If people buy a pair or things like that, maybe pay for the shipping if you don't normally. But in general, it's probably not a good idea to constantly be having sales and all kinds of the regular marketing gimmicks that work for things other than boas. Because it really will make you look flaky and it might kind of devalue the items that you have. So prices that are too high are an issue, but then prices that are too low are an issue as well. Because if somebody sees you have a nice boa and the price is well below what they were expecting based on the market, they're gonna think maybe there's something wrong with that boa. And they're gonna think twice about doing business with you. And in fact, when I first started out and nobody really knew me, I made that mistake, I priced some boas too low. And in many cases, I didn't get any interest in my ads. So I decided, well, I'll just increase the price 50 or $100. And usually it made a difference. You know, when the boa was priced more into the market range, people were more likely to buy the boa because they figured, well, that looks more like a legitimate ad and you know less likely that something could go wrong. When we think about the prices of boas, they're priced a little bit differently than many other goods because boas are really a luxury item. So you, when people price them, the price is really more in line with what some the, the, the strategy someone would use to price, say, an expensive Swiss watch or a work of art 
or a luxury car, some other type of luxury item. Nobody needs BOAS. Okay, so if someone has the money, the discretionary income, and say they've got a few thousand dollars, they want to buy some really nice BOAS, if they see something that's, say, you know, a hundred dollars, they're going to think, well, you know, I'm going to go for a more high-end animal, and they might be a little suspicious of a hundred dollar animal. And the same thing applies with, you know, many paintings, people who are artists, maybe their paintings aren't selling for very much, you know, maybe they're pricing it just based on their time and the raw materials that go into the work of art. So maybe they have a painting that costs them like maybe $200 worth of materials in a couple hours of their time and nobody wants it, but maybe they go and they sell it for 20 grand and suddenly someone thinks, well, there might be something to that. And you know, we've all seen examples of like Picasso paintings that the, you know, the, the actual work of art is about the artistic skill level of a kindergartner and yet it's worth tens of thousands of dollars. Now, I'm not trying to bash the art market, I love art myself, but a lot of it is not because of the painting, it's because of who painted it and the reputation. Um, same thing applies to boas. A lot of it is about the history of the boa, the project, where it came from. So you can think of boas almost like a work of art. And in many cases, boas are a work of art and they should be priced with a similar strategy. And that, my friend, is the topic of an upcoming video, so be sure to stay tuned for that. And so I hope today's video was uh, thought-provoking, gave you some things to think about if your boas haven't been selling real well. As always, shoot me any questions or comments you might have. I'll do my best to answer them. If you have experience you want to share in the comments about your own sales experience and what's worked and what hasn't, you know, the community here would love to hear that, so please write that below. And I appreciate your input, of course, as always. Anyway, thanks for watching, and enjoy your boas.